From not racing for the rest of 2022 to double duty in 24 hours for Parker Price Miller, we'll talk about that plus day one of World Finals, a new series director for the Outlaws and more. Let's go. It's Wednesday, November 2nd. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. World Finals for the World of Outlaws and Super Dirt Car Series is here, and there are a bunch of things to talk about today around the week of racing. We've got some driver news, some personnel news, and we'll talk some picks, uh, so let's just get into it. Uh, first, this year's World Finals is different than in the past. We've expanded to a four-day show from three, which each, uh, e each of the series is going to race three of those four nights. So tonight, it's World of Outlaws, Sprint Cars, and Late Models. Tomorrow, it's Late Models and Super Dirt Car Series. Fridays, it's Sprint Cars and Big Blocks. And then all three race on Saturday. So each night you're going to get two series of racing and the series that doesn't race each of the next three nights will participate in a fan fest event from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. each day. So with the sprint cars and late models racing today, the super dirt car series has their fan event today. It's a little bit different look for world finals, uh, but a lot to see and do if you are coming out to the event. If you're going to tune in on Dirt Vision, they are actually running two separate streams all week. They'll have the normal race stream plus a watch party set up with Dave Reef, Nick Hoffman, Hannah Newhouse, Chase Rodman, and guests rotating through. So a couple of different ways to watch uh, if you are so inclined to do that as well. So a lot, a lot of different things uh, to do around World Finals, a lot, of, uh, a lot of different ways to watch. So uh, all kinds of good stuff coming out of Charlotte this week. Uh, looking at tonight's racing for the sprint cars and late models, David Gravel has won four of the last six features at Charlotte going back to World Finals in 2019. He'll need to keep that pace rolling if he's going to knock down that 16-point advantage that Brad Sweet currently has. Other recent winners include Brent Marks and Logan Schuhart. Uh, Benny asked me in the YouTube comments yesterday basically who I thought was going to win this title, and I still think it's Brad Sweet. The moment will not be bigger than these guys. Uh, obviously, they're coming in having won three straight championships, and I think Brad will come in hungry to close this thing out. The 16-point difference is basically eight positions, so Gravel has to average beating Sweet by 2.67 pos uh, positions per night. Gravel really has no choice here but to finish on the podium and try and win all three nights. And that could go one of two ways. That could be a good thing and free that team up to just be full send. It could also mean unnecessary risk taking. Uh, you know, that means moving forward in heat races, if he makes dashes, moving forward in features, making uh, risky moves through lap traffic. The momentum is clearly on Gravel's side, though, as he leads the series in average finish over the past five races and the past 10 races. He also hasn't finished worse than fourth at Charlotte since May of 2019. But I think if Sweet knocks out a few top fives here, uh, I think this thing is pretty much done. The advantage isn't as big as it's been in past seasons for him, but 16 points could be just enough to carry Sweet to a fourth straight title. Some other uh, food for thought for you. Uh, back through the 2017 season, Sweet has finished 15th or worse on 17 different occasions. Following 15 of those, Sweet was top 10 the next race. And three of those uh, 15 races were wins, nine were podiums. So 15 of 17 times that Brad has finished 15th or worse with the series, he scored a top 10 the very next race. And remember that Napa 49 is coming off that 27th place finish at Williams Grove. The DirtTracker.com analytics prediction formula is giving Gravel the nod for the race win tonight. Now drop me a comment. Let me know what your picks are for tonight and for the championship. Do you think this is Gravel's? Do you think this is Sweet's? Uh, we obviously haven't had an outlaw championship chase this close in a couple of seasons. So it's kind of fun to come into world finals and actually have something uh, kind of much bigger on the line here. Alongside the Sprint Car Series tonight, the late models will also be in action. No championship drama on this side as Dennis Herb Jr. has wrapped up the 2022 title. The rookie battle is still wide open, though, as is that second place spot in points with Max Blair and Tanner English set to fight it out over the next couple of nights. The field will be absolutely stacked for the late models this weekend. A lot of big names coming in. Uh, besides the outlaw regulars, you're going to get Jimmy Owens, Brandon Overton, Lucas Champion Tim McCready is coming, Jonathan Davenport, Scott Bloomquist, Tyler Erb, Chris Madden. Hudson O'Neill will be uh, in his first appearance in that rocket one, so that's something to watch over the next couple of days. And a whole lot of other guys will be here as well. Davenport swept the World Finals features a year ago with McCready and Overton winners in 2020. Of drivers with multiple feature starts back through 2019, Davenport leads all drivers in average finish at Charlotte, trailed by Chris Madden and Brandon Shepard. You won't see B. Shep, though, this weekend. Uh, he was going to take a little bit of time off after the end of the season before they start kind of moving on into their plans for 2023. So no B. Shep at uh, World Finals. 
As for the news from yesterday, we've got a few things to get to. First, I'm a little surprised about Parker Price Miller. Uh, Jeremy Elliott had the story the other day, which we talked about on yesterday's show, in which PPM was quoted as saying he wasn't going to race for the rest of this year. His parents didn't want him to go just yet, and then he'd be back at Volusia, and then maybe in some late model stuff in December and at the Wild West Shootout. But then yesterday came the announcement that he's going to run the Swindell Speed Lab 39 for the next three nights. Uh, so that's, you know, not something we expected. And then he posted a photo of a Longhorn chassis late model with Kevin Rumley and Tim McCready in the background. He was apparently getting in some laps before he makes his World of Outlaws late model debut this weekend as well. He's on the pre-entry list for that series. So from no racing for the rest of the year to double duty for World Finals, that was a quick turnaround from Jeremy's piece that he posted on Monday. Uh, a quick note about the pre-entries for World Finals. Right now, my uh, my race pass uh, as of this morning shows 26 sprint cars, 61 late models, and 30 big blocks. Those numbers should grow as the day goes along, though those are just pre-entries and not what's at the racetrack right now. And as expected with the departure of current series director Casey Schumann, the World of Outlaws Late Model Series and World Racing Group announced yesterday that Steve Francis will take over that position for next season. The Dirt Late Model Hall of Famer moved over to the Outlaws from Lucas earlier this year as director of competition and now takes over full control of the series. It sounds like changes are already coming to the National Late Model Tour for 2023. Francis mentioned rebuilding the schedule to be more in line with how the racers would do it. He also talked about purse restructuring with more cash available for finishers from 3rd through 14th in a main event. The dirt late model landscape has become incredibly competitive over the last few seasons with racers having a ton of options to choose from each week. And we'll see if Francis can keep the outlaws uh, kind of towards the top of the heap. But again, not a surprising move here. Uh, it seems that maybe uh, we, uh, the, the you know World Racing Group and the outlaws knew about this pr uh, ahead of time. And that was a, you know, something that helped them get Francis to come over. He could come over, you know, kind of get settled in, do this director of competition role for a few months and then take over for Schumann. So uh, Kentucky Colonel, now the uh, series director for the World of Outlaws Late Model Series. I'm actually headed out to World Finals tonight myself. It's going to be my first time at an outlaw show in a couple of years. Uh, I've got some new camera gear to play with, so I'll be out and about hopefully making some cool content for you guys. Uh, so stay tuned in the coming days and weeks for that stuff. One other personnel news item uh, from yesterday is not related to World Finals, uh, but USAC announced it has brought in veteran promoter and competition guy Tommy Estes to be their competition director for circle track racing. Uh, as a part of that role, Tommy will head up the Silver Crown Series and serve as an advisor to Kirk Spridgen, who runs the Sprint Car and Midget Series. Tommy was a racer. He's worked previously for the Chili Bowl, the ASCS. He ran Dodge City Raceway Park for a long time. I don't want to age Tommy here, but the USAC release mentions 45 years in the sport. Uh, Tommy's well-respected will be a solid addition to the USAC staff. Uh, it sounds like we've got quite a few uh, new episodes this week, or it looks like we've got quite a few new episodes this week across the other Dirt Racing podcasts. Wing Nation has Geo Selzy and Blake Hahn. Loud Pedal has Cody Swanson. Passing Points has Cameron Hagen. All Gas No Breaks actually has two new episodes. Uh, and there are fresh shows for The Dirt Reporters, Dirt Tracks uh, and Rib Racks, The Dirt Nerds, and Wednesdays with Wayne. To see the full list of shows and episodes, head over to dirttracker.com slash podcast. Uh, and looking at the streaming schedule, three shows on it for today. Dirt Vision has night one of World Finals from Charlotte, plus the second night of the Carolina Micro Showdown from Millbridge. There is also Flow Racing 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Uh, the Carolina Micro Showdown last night, I believe the feature winners were Cannon McIntosh and Brent Cruz. So that's something else kind of in the Charlotte area to check out tonight if you're interested in that. Uh, that's it for the show today. Have a good Wednesday. Please hit that like button and subscribe to the show if you do not do so already. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily. Thank you.